lift the waist and hold. Hold with your elbow. And goes like this. You turn only from left to right. So that's clockwise. You never go counterclockwise. And number four, how to use the restroom wearing the yukata. And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. It's me, Shogo, and I have Kazu, Tomoko, and Harumi, all four of us. Thank you so much for coming, guys. All right, so you probably already noticed uh, Tomoko and I are wearing a special kimono. Well, actually, this is a yukata. Yeah. And it's not just a yukata, but it actually is a kind that can be worn at Ryokan hotels. Mm -hmm. So gradually, we're hoping that the borders of Japan will be opening for everyone to be able to travel to Japan again. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure many of you, of course, considering staying at Ryokan hotels. And when you actually do so, because it's a traditional kind of hotel, you would find these yukata to wear inside the building. It's considered kind of like a pajama, basically, that you're allowed to wear within the ryokan. But I'm pretty sure the first time you see it, though, you're like, you'd be like, uh, this doesn't have any buttons or any strings, like, how am I supposed to put yeah, this on? Right. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure there will be some kind of instructions next to it, yeah. But I thought it'd be nicer if we can kind of explain not just how to put it on, but also how to move around it in it and such, which is also really important because this is usually just one layer. If you move around in it, you know, without understanding how to do it, it tends to, you know, come off, you know? Yeah, and go all over the place and such. So I hope you can enjoy this, especially if you're planning on coming to Japan and staying at a Ryokan hotel. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese social culture, tips on traveling to Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. So then, let's get started. So then, let's get started, Tomoko. Let's put on your yukata. There we are. But before we do, though, um, underneath it, what would you usually wear underneath the yukata, though? First of all, ryokan usually don't prepare any kind of cloth. Mm. But I usually wear no sleep shirt. Mm. Mm. Okay, okay. Mm. Because during sleeping, the clothes is completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, okay, that's fine. Right. The Obi comes afterwards. Just two items. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, simple. Really simple. <laughs> very, very simple. Yeah, first of all, uh, hold the color and put yukata behind you because yukata is long. So this is easy way to wear. Mm. And put yukata over your shoulders. Oh, okay. And like this. Mm. There are lines here. Mm. Oh, they are, they are, that's right. Mm. Mm -hmm. Put together and hold a little bit underneath. Oh, okay. okay. To make space, the emon here. Oh, mm. okay, okay, behind your neck. Mm -hmm. To show your name, right? Exactly. Mm. Please pull it down a little bit. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay, while you hold on to the front, you pull the back. Mm. Okay. So it's cooler. Mm. But this is just for women. Just for women. Mm. Yeah. Hold a little bit of cloth. And yukata has front face. Mm. So this is the goal. This is mm. the front face. Mm. Mm. Okay. So there is a line here. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you shoot this line is here, the side of body. Mm. And the line is here. Oh, the other side. side. Oh, other okay. side of the body. Okay, okay, okay. To make this, please pull the clothes against the waist. Try to make the length the same, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bring your right hand to your left waist. Waist. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Then the lines, both of the lines come to your side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pull the right hand by your left elbow. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, good, okay, good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Come out to the inside mm -hmm. so the cloth doesn't slip. Mm -hmm. Oh, exactly. I see, I see. And like this. Oh, okay, oh, okay, okay. okay. Oh. Is this good? Looks nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Looks like, okay. yeah, the center. Center, again. Mm -hmm. If you're not satisfied, <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't feel right, please back 
go back. Mm. I'll do it again, pull it again. Then mm. like mm. adjust. Adjust it a little bit. Mm. Mm. See? So let's oh. waste. Mm. Hold. Hold with your elbow. Mm. Goes like this. Mm. Goes the other side too. So it's actually really simple. You just fold it in. Mm. 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 But you do need to do it a little bit firmly so the, the side lines come to your side. Oh yeah, that's, yeah. that's right. Exactly, exactly. Mm. And hold here. Mm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Adjust the balance of color. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Make space mm. of one hip finger. Oh, okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Just a little bit of space. It's not completely squeezed. So, <laughs> it's not completely no squeezed. Squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just a little bit of space. Mm -hmm. Not too open. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, come to think of it, the front side too open is a little bit, what should I say, vulgar, you know, mm. not very good looking. Yeah, that's mm. right. So just one finger for the mm. And of course, it's middle. Yep. Oh, yeah, right in the center. Mm. Okay? Mm. The next is Obi. Nice bad Obi. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Hold the middle of Obi mm. and yeah. it here yeah. and wrap once. Once. Wow, looking at that, it's really thinner than the regular ones you put on. That's right. <laughs> but I think the ones at the Ryokan will be like this. Yeah, very simple mm -hmm. and easy to put on. Okay, cross it in the back. Cross mm -hmm. the back there. Tight ones. Mm. This, this direction. Not like this and not like this. Mm. Sideways. Make a butterfly knot. Mm. Butterfly knot. Okay. On the center. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can it. Very mm -hmm. simple. Just mm -hmm. it up there. Uh, so it's a little bit different from just a simple butterfly mm -hmm. like you would do on your shoelaces. It's more fat. Mm. Yeah, exactly. The front side is flat, so it really looks like a ribbon. Mm. Mm. Beautiful. I recommend this move to right side. Mm. Okay, move it to the side. Mm -hmm. Not to this of your movement. Oh, mm. so you see, I don't want to nod right in front of you. Mm. Mm. Please don't move wrong to left side. Okay. Mm. Because if you do it like this, Ah, this okay. Goes okay. Okay. Oh, oh. Mm, and like this. Oh. Oh, oh, because you're bringing the front side of the yukata from your left to the right. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you yeah. rotate it, you want to rotate from the left to right. Is yeah, that yeah, yeah. Oh, I see, I see. And lastly, please get rid of wrinkles. Mm. Oh, on the oh, back yeah, side. that's right, that's mm. right. Please pull it side. Pull it to the side. Mm -hmm. It's easy way to use finger. Mm. Pull and pull. Mm. Oh, okay. Put your index finger into your OB yeah. and pull it to the side. Mm, beautiful. To remove the wrinkles from the back. Okay. Done. Oh, <laughs> really simple. Simple. It's mm. two pieces of clothing. So. Yeah. Amazing. So then, Tomoko, you're finished. So I guess we can move on to Shogo then. Yes, it's my turn. Let's switch. So everyone, it's my turn. Yay! I have my bath already on my shoulders. Mm. Uh, to be really honest though, guys, men's kimono dressing is not as strict as the women's kimono dressing, to be mm -hmm. honest. Mm -hmm. uh, please just understand that this, this is just the way that I would do it personally. Mm -hmm. okay? So just put it on your shoulders very simply. You don't have, I wouldn't usually bring it up around my waist and everything, just like the Moko did. Just bring it to the front, but um, I, of course it will be best if you bring this to the side though. Mm -hmm. So the length will be the same. Yeah, And then again, you just fold in the right side first to your waist, and then the left side comes over it. Yeah. And um, on the yukata or any kimono, there are lines, you know, there are lines that are vertically along the kimono. Mm -hmm. So you just have the lines straight, and then it'll be perfect, actually. There's yeah. nothing really difficult, you know. And usually there will be like S, M, L, you know, L, L sizes of mm -hmm. yukata inside yeah, your room, yeah, probably yeah. in most cases. I think if you let your yukata know, your, your your family members, for example, it will prepare the right size yukata for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you don't have to adjust the length and anything either. So it's very simple, just like the women's one. Yeah, put this on. Then the obi that we bought for the men's one is actually blue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is really nice looking as well. Um, the ribbon 
tie that Tomoko is doing is really cute, but maybe not too much for men. <laughs> so I would like to, if you want to, you can do the ribbon uh, tie to, for example, your couples, your families and such. But for men, I personally would recommend trying out to do the katawasami with this too. Katawasami, yeah. So it's a little bit shorter and it's a little bit thinner, so I'm not too sure if I could do it like usual, but let me try. Yeah. So this is how I would do it, by the way. There's different ways of doing it, but I always put this on the side of my waist here. Mm -hmm. Side of my waist. And then you go around. By the way, if you want to know how to properly do it with a kakobi, with the regular kimono or hakama and such, you can take a look at our previous videos, by the way. Yeah. So this is actually really, really short than the usual obi, so mm -hmm. it can only go around twice around my waist. So the obi's head is different from mine? Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's right, that's right. So I would go around like this. And then you have this end that's left over right. This is exactly the same how you would do it with the kakobi. You have to trying it like this. You have two ends now. One side has the end folded in, so the length is trying to be just the same. But right now it doesn't have to be exactly the same because this, you're going to be bringing it up. The other end that's not folded in this side goes underneath it. And then you wrap the folded end inside from down to up into the loop that you just made, right here. I really wish I had uh, more s steady hands here, but... <laughs> okay, and then you have this coming upwards. You put this into the obi you have over here. So that would be right here. You have the wrapped obi, you put this inside here. Exactly. And then it'd be like this. Maybe the length might be a little bit different. You know, like this, mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, just to the side, just the front. Probably as you were tying it, it might have moved around a little bit. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's not that bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, for a regular kimono, you would have the knot in the back, but just like uh, how Tomoko was doing, you can't have it on the side like this, maybe, like in the front. But I usually, if I say a yoga, I would bring it to the back. So again, just like Tomoko was demonstrating earlier, you turn only from left to right. So that's clockwise. You never go counterclockwise when you're turning the obi. So it's this way. And you turn it, here it's right here. So you turn it all the way over here. And then the back is all wrinkled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's best that you don't bring the knot completely at your back. It's a little bit more stylish, just like Tomoko was doing, and the knot comes a little bit to the side. Mm -hmm. So you go to the center, or a little, pa little bit past center is a little bit wrinkled. So you actually go backwards and bring the knot a little bit to the right waist. Mm -hmm. That would be a little bit to the right side, just a little bit. This looks good. Maybe, maybe just uh, get rid of the wrinkles just a little bit more. Okay. Mm -hmm. Move back a little bit. The side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and kind of stretch it. Stretch yeah, it yeah. Out. yeah, 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 that was good. As Tomoko was doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Alright, so this is how I would usually do it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But again, really, really simple. Really yeah. simple. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I introduced the, um, the Kadawasami today. Like this, mm -hmm. you know. But to be honest, it could be anything. This is just one kimono style way of putting it on. So if this is difficult for you, you don't have to do that. Yeah. But just the few points that you have to keep in mind is that the, the right side will always go under the left side. Mm -hmm. And maybe the collar here needs to be at the center. And also, men don't have the emo, so you don't show the nape of your neck. Mm -hmm. So you can completely hide your, the back of your neck away. And by the way, Tomoko and I just finished uh, putting the kikata on just like this, but I believe some yokam might provide the haori over this too, mm -hmm. which is basically another layer to just uh, put over your shoulders kind of thing. Sometimes when you don't know about the haori, you try to put it on and you're like, why is this so short? You know? <laughs> yeah, but that's the haori part, which goes over the completed yukata. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind for us. So next thing, let's talk about the few points that we need to look out for when we are wearing the yokan yukata. Mm -hmm. yeah. So number one, we want to talk a little bit about how to walk in them. How to walk. Exactly, mm. exactly. Tomoko, can you explain how you walk in the yukata, by the way? Mm. For women, because the hem is tight, so please walk in a line and small step. Like oh. this. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I often see Japanese walk like with a stick. If you do this, the hem is like this. It opens, mm, open, open it opens, so it 
looks no good. Small step in mm -hmm. the line. Oh, okay. oh, like you're walking on a single line. Mm -hmm. exactly, exactly. Oh, I see, I see. And I guess one step is about one foot, foot or length, yeah. or oh. foot length, I guess. I think it's really similar for men as well, but mm -hmm. um, if for men, if you walk like this, <laughs> it might be a little bit unnatural uh, for men to walk mm -hmm. in one straight line. Yeah. So I usually, what I'm told when I wear like the style of kimono, for example, like kinagashi and such, you have your feet in your shoulder width distance, and so it's just like this, you know, maybe like one this distance between your two feet, you know? mm -hmm. and you you keep these two feet in one line. Oh, mm -hmm. so like yeah. parallel. Exactly, like a parallel. Yeah. Not not in one straight line like this. <laughs> yeah, which would make um women look more elegant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one step should be the same size. One mm -hmm. foot length. Really small step. Because again, for men too, if you do it like this, see, it's starting to open up. <laughs> so it's not a really good thing to do. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, it might be a little bit, what should I say, irritating because <laughs> it takes so much time to get out of it. You know, you have to walk like a penguin. Like a penguin. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But this is how you need to walk though when you've gone. Otherwise it's gonna go all over the place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And even though if you put it on so neatly, you know, just you know, gets all into a mess. Mm -hmm. So that's number one, how to walk in the yukata. Yeah. So guys, we brought the stool here, so mm. we want to kind of demonstrate how you would go up the stairs too. Mm. Yeah. I think at Yokan, for example, if you want to go to like the onsen area or things like that, they tend to be on a different floor. Yes, yeah. right. So there's occasions where you have to go up and down stairs. Yeah. But again, with this on, with the yukata on, it's a little bit difficult. Yeah. Mm. So I'd like to demonstrate for you. Who would you like to do it for me? Mm. Okay. As I said before, mm -hmm. the hem is easily open, mm -hmm. so please put the two layers here together. Mm -hmm. Together, a little bit pull it up a little bit. Okay, like this. Oh, mm -hmm. I see, I see. Mm -hmm. Because the hem is also tight, so. It's really hard yeah. to lift, lift your feet in the first place. Mm -hmm. I bet it's the same for going down as well, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, go for going down. It's better mm. you hold on to it. Mm, yeah. Okay, that's right. And actually, not just for going up and down stairs, but any when any time, like for example, there's strong wind or you know you're you're walking outside a little bit, and if you might feel that your gut is going all over the mess, you can hold on to it when you're just simply walking outside too. Mm. Yes, just to keep it in place. Yeah. Mm. But especially for stairs, is something you need to keep in mind for for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly the same for men. So. I'd rather not step on this and destroy our time floor, so <laughs> yeah. I'll just let them open it for us. But. Then we just practice how to walk, but next we like to practice how to sit down as well, mm. which is also really difficult when you put these yukata on. Yeah. Mm. So, Dobo, would it be okay if you demonstrate how you would sit down with the yukata okay. on? We usually sit down as seiza. Mm -hmm. That's what it's like. First, get the knees together uh -huh. mm. and like this. Mm, kind of fold it in as you sit down. Mm, yeah. And if you have a chair, it would be a little bit dif different too, right? Mm, we okay. fold here together. Again. Yeah. Mm. Like this. Oh, you're pulling it a little bit, I guess? A little bit. Mm, oh, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Mm, so yeah. basically, you're just holding onto it so it doesn't um, fall apart then. Mm. Mm. It's important that the hem is straight. Say, straight. If you don't hold here, mm -hmm. the hem will like mm, this. Okay, like this. Okay. Ah, you mm. stand up. Okay, okay, okay. And one more tip I recommend when you sit down, mm -hmm. the uh -huh. clothes will be tight. Oh, so okay, okay, okay. okay. The hip, but up a little bit. Uh -huh. like this. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It's really, really tight. So if you bring it up a little bit, bring your hip up a little bit, and then sit down, you'll have more space for your legs. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. I think this is exactly the same for men as well. Let me demonstrate it too. Mm. <laughs> you guys already start to get a little bit messy. But <laughs> so again, you hold on to the side together, pull it up a little bit, and you sit down. Oh, uh, this is really, really comfortable. Mm. Yeah, this is really comfortable. Put it back to the front again. And. When you sit down on the floor too, yeah. For men, it's the same. You just hold here so it doesn't go all over the place. Yeah, you just hold all right under your knee, right under your knee, and then you would sit down like this, like this. It's almost the same, but if you you don't do it too as neatly as women would do usually in most cases. Yeah, and when you stand up, by the way, it's easier to stand up if you put up your fingers first. If you put up your fingers like this, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. And then if you stand up from here, it'll be much easier to for you to stand up. If you try to immediately, for example, lift up your feet from here, <laughs> you'll have trouble no, down. No, no, no. So it's much easier to just bring up your toes first and then lift your body from here. 
that would be much more comfortable for you, I bet. Then number three, when you pick up something with mm. a, well actually any kimono on, then you need to be careful of your sleeves. That's right. The ones that we have now have rather shorter sleeves, maybe some nyokan might have the longer ones too. Yeah. And this is also something important to, when you wear any kind of kimono, so I'd like to explain this to you too. So I'm going to be holding on to my favorite fan I have here in my hands, and Tomoko will be demonstrating how to take it. Mm. Simple. Yeah, it's really easy. Just pull the sleeve mm -hmm. in the like this. Go like that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. As simple as that. Yeah. But when you don't know about this, I was just looking at your sleeves. For example, if you were eating your full course of dishes at a ryokan and you have all the other plates in front of you and you reach out without doing anything, your sleeve might be dipped into the, your soup or whatever yeah, you're eating right now. Yeah, soy sauce or sashimi and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's, it's always best that you remember to hold on to here and be careful. Yeah. But it's really just simple. You just pinch it with your fingertips. Mm. And hold on to your sleep to pick up something. And I believe this is probably good manners too, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really good manners too as well. So mm -hmm. not just to prevent it from getting dirty, but it's also good manners. Mm -hmm. So you can keep that in mind for us as well. And number four, how to use the restroom wearing the yukata. Actually, this is a question we get a lot about how to go to the bathroom with your kimono on. But it's something really, really similar though. Yeah. yeah. So for women, how would you do it? Mm. First. Open the hand. Mm -hmm. Open the right. Side. Mm. Open the other hand. Mm -hmm. In. Up. Oh, you lift it. Oh, mm. All the way up like that. Mm. Very interesting. And put the edge inside Obi. Oh. oh. And. You do your business. <laughs> do your business. <laughs> Get your job done. <laughs> when you finish. Like this. Oh. Please mind the edge, pull until the end. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Pull it to the far end. Mm. Mm -hmm. Like this. Mm, and you fix it. Oh my gosh, that's mm. perfect. Mm. I am very certain that I cannot do that perfectly, but <laughs> it's completely back to normal. Like nothing happened. Oh my gosh. Mm. So for men, um, it's really easy to imagine, guys, because uh, if you want to do your business, get your business done on your standing, you just bring it open, yeah, and get your business done. If it's, of course, you're going to be sitting down, you do exactly the same. You just lift it, put it up, you put it into your obi, and then you sit down. So it's exactly the same. And just like Tomoko did, you have to put it back, you put, this is actually the same for whenever you, for example, if you feel that your yukata is a little bit messy again, yeah, this is the same. You do the first layer, yeah, and then do the second layer. When it's your first time putting the yukata on, when your inside layer, yeah, your inner layer gets messy, and you just pull the front side, and you're thinking, oh, why is this side so messy, you know? Like, why can't I fix this side? It's because it's inside. Yeah, so you need to first fix the inside, see? The, um, the my collar is starting to move. Yeah. You need to first fix the inside, pull it to the side as she was doing, and then the front side afterwards to bring it straight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So you do need to do one layer at a time to fix it. Yeah, that's a really important thing you have to keep in mind. And you move a little of the obi just a little bit, and it's nice and neat again. Mm. As simple as that. When mm -hmm. your collar mm -hmm. get loose, like that. please pull. Here. On this side. The, the edge. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm. You pull it up a lot. So. Yeah. So it get loose. Please pull the edge. Yep, pull the edge there. It's a little bit, you know, cornered there, you can see. It's kind mm. of pointy. So. Mm. Yeah. And lastly, number five, this is just one point of caution where you can wear the yukata inside the yukata. So please consider that the yukata that the yukata will provide for you is a kind of pajama that you wear within the yukata. So it's completely fine for you to go outside of your room in it. Yeah, go to the, for example, the restaurants within the ryokan, go to the onsen with this on, you know, and go in, go out with this. Yeah. Mm. But um, going, for example, outside the ryokan facilities, like maybe like a nearby convenience store would be okay, but like going outside in this for, you know, sightseeing and stuff like that is definitely not good. Yeah. So please just keep that one point in, in mind for us. You might think that this is, you know, a really traditional kind of clothing and it looks really neat, but yukata inside yukata is considered pajamas, so just keep that one point in mind for us. 
But to be honest, recently the borderline between gyokan and regular hotels are getting really ambiguous. Yeah. Sometimes so the hotels could have the, these yukata prepared for you. But um, usually there's some kind of sign of caution whether you're allowed to go outside of your room with the yukata on or not. So please just uh, look out for that for us. Yeah, I think each um, hotel recently um, are different. Each inn, the rules are different. So just look out for that for us then. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. So we've uh, made a lot of kimono videos in the past mm. and uh, this putting on the ikata is just so easy. Yeah. Yeah. We've explained right. so much of the complicated procedures before, you know, and this was like, un, uh, oh, <laughs> done. <laughs> One, two, finish. <laughs> this was like amazingly short, yeah. yeah. But this is how easily you can turn, put on the yukata at Yoga Hotel. So I really, really hope you can try it out, yeah. And we tried to include everything on how to put on the yukata and how to move around and as such. But if there's anything else you'd like to ask us, you can feel free to um, leave comments in this video or you can give us DMs through Instagram to be happy to answer you. And our goal is to achieve 2 million subscribers by January 2023, so your help would mean a lot. And we'll see you in our next video when we talk about kimonos and yukatas. Thank you so much, guys. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for your time.